Hi guys, it's Nancy, and today I'm showing you two new products from Spellbinders. And these are from Becca Feekin. They are called the Fluted Classics. And I think you guys will really like these for just kind of stepping up the elegance in your cards, which Becca Feekin is known for. Um, I'll put the links down below if you're interested in them. But this one is called the Fluted Classics Rectangles. And I believe there are five that were released. Um, there's Fluted Classic Circles, Fluted Classic Squares, Ovals, Rectangles, and Slimline. And I will show you guys the rectangles and the circles. So here's the rectangles. And what I wanted to show you is you get um, three decorative elements. And these are basically going to... Um, emboss the edges of your paper and it gives it a really pretty um how do I explain it almost like a ruffled look but not really and then you also get one two three four five six rectangle die so you get the decorative element and you get the die so if you are just starting out and you need to add to your collection this is great because you're going to get the most commonly sized dies as well as the decorative and just to show you this is your standard a2 size card so this is five and a half by four and a quarter and you can see that that's going to fit on there perfectly so um, that would be the largest size this is going to be the one in the middle. And then you have the smaller one. So it fits perfectly. And then the same thing with the dies. The dies will actually um, fit the interior and exterior of the decorative pieces, the fluted pieces. So we have the largest piece, which will cut out the outside. And this is great if you want to do any kind of layering because everything is set in place. So those two will cut out that border. You certainly don't have to in order to do the layering. This will cut out the outside of the middle size one. And then we have that internal piece. And then we have the smallest internal um external die and then the in the decorative piece and then the internal so a lot of great pieces here again to add to your collection whether you want to keep it solid in the middle or you just want a border to frame out whatever you're stamping um it's just going to look really nice so i have some decorative papers here on the side i also want to show you the circles the item number for these is s5475 and here are the circles. And I feel like for me, I'm always doing circles and rectangles. So that's why I got those two. But again, you have five different options. So, you know, think about the sizes of cards that you make the most often and add that to your collection. And if you don't have circle dies, this is a perfect way to build up your collection and get a decorative element. So the same thing, you're going to have three of the fluted decorative pieces. And then you're going to have the... Uh, cutting dies for the exterior and the interior of that border and let's just see how this looks like on an A2 card so it's slightly larger if you go with the largest one for an A2 size card so I would say if you're going to do maybe a 5x5 five five card um, or 6x6 six six probably it would look best um, let me measure that where is my ruler I've lost my ruler So the largest circle is, the largest die is going to be four and a half inches. So yeah, if you did a five by five card, that would fit nicely on there. Um, so again, you have the exterior, the middle, and the small one, and you have in, interior and exterior dies to cut along those circles. So you get six dies and three, let me just make sure I have it right, two three, four, five, six. So six dies and three decorative pieces, okay? And again, the other sizes were the squares, ovals, and slim lines. So if you are really into the slim lines, you can pick those up. The item code for the circles is S41150. 
And again, I will link everything down below for you. But let's cut them. Let's see what they look like. Let's see if we can put a card together. I have grabbed out of my stash some different colors of silver, grays, um, mirror cardstock here. So I thought let's cut these out and see what we can get. All right. So I think what I will do is for the background layer, actually, I think I'll start with the darkest color. Let's see. Let me grab the largest die here. I think that might already be A2 size, so maybe we don't need to cut that. It is A2 size. Okay. So I don't need to cut that. So if you needed to cut that, it would be five and a half by four and a quarter. So I got lucky on that one. I don't need to cut it. So that would be that piece. So then let's do let's do this piece. And I think it would be best if we cut it and then put the dot put the um frame on there so we can do that all in one shot now I'm not going to cut the center out right away we'll cut the center out in a moment I want you to see what it looks like if you do or don't cut it out is the most perfect tape from Spellbinders. So I'm going to make sure that I kind of have the frame centered around the fluted piece there so that it looks even. And like I said, there is another frame die. You can cut the center out. I'm not going to do that yet. I want to see what this looks like leaving that there because I'm going to layer this up. So I don't think I want to cut that out yet. And so I'm going to cut this so that it fits before I run it through my die cutting machine. And I know I'm wasting a little bit of paper here, but that's okay. We'll be all right. All right, let me run this through my die cutting machine and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm back. So I wish I had recorded that, but I'll record the next one. Um, when I ran it through, it actually did not uh, emboss it the way that I wanted it to emboss. So I ran it through again and I put my embossing shim underneath it. So now you can see how that perfectly fits in the background. Um, I was going to put that in the background, but then I realized after I did it, oh, that is A2 card size, so never mind. <laughs> so that's okay. We can put that in the background. So this next one, I'm just going to kind of cut this as a layer. Let's see here. Yeah, so we'll just cut this one. I thought I have a smaller piece. And that's all we're going to do is continue to layer this up. So we're not going to do any decorative elements on this one. It'll just be a layering piece. And then when we see, it'll give us a nice little border for when we do layer this one up. So let me just cut this one. And I'm using my Gemini Junior. Um, you would use your whatever die cutting machine you're using. I do have the Platinum machine as well. Um, but you would just sandwich it the way you normally would sandwich for either embossing or die cutting. So this one I'm just going to cut. See, so we don't need to use that piece and I will be right back. All right, so you can see how that layers beautifully in the center there. And this is what I meant. If you wanted to do that inlaid um, die cutting technique, you could go through and die cut that out and then lay this right in there and it will snuggle itself right in. I'm okay with layering it. I think when there's some dimension, when it's layered, it pops up. It looks a little bit elegant. So we're going to be okay with that one. And then I'm going to go do, I think for the center piece here, which is this one, we got some mirror card. This is like holographic mirror card. And on this one, I'll show you guys my sandwich for um, die cutting, die cutting it and for embossing it. And I hope it'll emboss okay on this mirror card. 
So again, I wanna tape these two together and make sure my spacing looks correct. If you're not comfortable doing that, you can die cut first or emboss first and then die cut it. It's personal preference. All right, I think that looks pretty well aligned. So I think the first thing I wanna do is emboss it and then cut it before I cut it and then embossed it. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. But so for embossing, and this is for my Gemini Junior. I'm going to have my, um, my cutting plate first. And then I'm going to put down my magnetic shim. And the magnetic shim is just to give you some squish. So if you're using your um, Spellbinders machine, you would use your embossing mat. So I'm going to do the embossing part first, which is going to push those fluted edges into the cardstock there. Now, because this is a piece of foil card, whatever you lay on top of it is going to imprint on the foil card. So you may want to grab a piece of plain paper to lay on top of that just to protect it. There we go. And then put your, for, for this machine, I have a, a, two plates I put on top. So we're gonna run this through first and this should emboss it and I don't think it will cut it. paper might have been kind of thick but what it did is see it protected that and now um, since I want to cut it I'm going to just put this oh it actually did cut and emboss it okay never mind that worked out perfect all right I think because I had that extra paper shim in there it did that but you can see how this is layering up beautifully and I really love the look of those edges so now we have three layers on our card, one fluted, one plain, another fluted, and you can see how you can continue to go on here. I think what I'm going to do for the last one, again, I'm not going to cut the centers out. You can cut the centers if you want to, you know, especially when it comes to this beautiful paper, you want to save every little piece. I think for the smallest one, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hot foil a sentiment on this uh, silver metallic card that we used on the first layer. And then we'll cut that out and we'll put that in the center. So I'm gonna grab my glimmer machine, heat that up, grab a sentiment, and I will be right back. Okay guys, I've brought the glimmer in. As you can see, it is warming up. And I brought in these sentiments from Spellbinders from Lori Wilson. These are called Effortless, Effortless Sentiments. Um, and what's cool is not only do you get these hot foil sentiments thinking of you with sympathy or thank you, it also comes with the matching dies. So if I don't like the way that I hot foiled it, I can always go back in with the, um, the dies and cut it out, which is always cool, right? So let me stick these back in these places. All right, so in the meantime, while that's warming up, I already have the dye on there warming up. I'm going to um, pre-cut this last fluted layer here before our pre-cut and emboss it while our machine is warming up. And like I said, if I mess it up, we can always die cut that out and then just lay the sentiment in there. So we want this and we want the outside layer, which I believe is this one. So perfect. All right, I'm gonna go run that through the die cutting machine and I'll be back and hopefully the glimmer will be all warmed up and ready to do some foiling. Welcome back. All right, so I have cut a piece of this prism Glimmer foil, which is going to match with our card beautifully. I'm going to cut that down a little bit here. Hopefully we don't get too much over foiling with this. And so 
said, our machine is ready to go. And we're going to put the pretty side touching the die. And if you're concerned with alignment, I'm going to grab a little piece of washi tape here. This particular washi tape does a little better. It doesn't really like, um, should I say, melt like some of the other ones do. Whoops. All right. Release my finger. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to line that up the way that I want it to go. Put my tape on there. All right. Now I'm going to flip that up. Put the pretty side up. Dull side down. All right. Now we can flip the whole thing over. All right. And we're going to hit the ready button. Let that count down. Takes about 60 seconds. And again, not going to make you guys wait through that. I will bring you back in. I pull this up so you can watch that go through. I'll bring you back in in 60 seconds for me, but two seconds for you guys. Okay. We are ready to go. Remove the platform from the heating unit. Just gently roll this across. I'm not using any additional shims. Because this is a metallic pearlescent paper, usually foiling takes to that pretty well. We'll see how we do here. Hopefully I don't have over foiling or my plates didn't move because I had untaped my plates from the platform to show a different demonstration and I didn't tape them back on. So we'll see how that affects everything. So normally I have these taped to here. All right, let's do the reveal here. Okay, I have some underfoiling, so I'm going to leave it alone. That's why it's good to have the tape on there. I'm gonna put a paper shim on here. So that's that extra piece of paper we had before. And I'm going to let this uh, warm up again. And hit that button. And I'll be back and we'll roll it through again um, with that paper shim on there. So it's a good thing I check that with the tape. It really comes in handy. Thank you, Yana, for that lifesaver. All right, I'll be back in a minute, guys. Okay, guys, try two. Our timer is done. Again, slowly pressing this. I can definitely feel there's a little bit more pressure this time. Sometimes you have to add that paper shim again, just depending on how thick your card stock is. And I'm gonna go pretty slowly here again. This is a metallic pearlescent paper. Normally foil does stick to it pretty well. But just to make sure, I'm gonna go two full passes. I'm done. Hopefully, we have enough pressure that time. If it doesn't work again, then I will add another paper shim. And sometimes you just have to do that, just depending on your machine. Okay. Again, just going to take a sneak peek here. Okay, I think we're pretty good. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. So I'm gonna gently pull that off of there, put that on the cooling plate, the silicone mat. I can turn that off. All right, and now it's just a matter of gluing everything together. That's pretty good. I think there's one tiny little spot there. It's under foil, but no one's gonna notice. All right, I've already glued the first layer on. Second layer is this uh, dark gray glitter cardstock. So easy to line everything up because they have these little dots inside there. So all you do is just put that in there. Then we have the holographic piece. And I'm not into stitching. I know that's kind of trendy right now, 
but having the little dots in there and the little fluted edges really kind of steps it up a little bit, makes it look really pretty. I'm gonna need some weight on here. I think I have a little too much glue on there. And then this piece, I think I'll put some foam tape on here. Okay, and now we have our fluted rectangle hot foiled with the prism hot foil elegant thank you card. And I think you guys can agree that was pretty easy to put together. They took all the guesswork out of it. And all I did was just add some pretty paper. And obviously you could do this with plain papers. I think it does look best when you have metallic papers, um, you know, or foil card or anything like that. So yeah, go check that out. I'll put the link down below for you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, guys, and keep on foiling. Bye-bye.